Greetings, the Astro 30 here yet again and welcome back to the channel. Today I want to build a more powerful uh, dummy load for testing power amplifiers. Now, the reason that's prompted me to build this is because, well, I blew up the other one. Um, it wasn't really suitable for testing amplifiers over 50 watts, to be honest. So I'll just quickly insert some footage here of the carnage of the original. Well, there's your problem. I've just opened up the dummy load and that resistor's actually cracked in half. You can see the ceramic on the inside. It's actually melted the wiring as well. So this is now completely stuffed. And, well, one wire's actually got so hot it's come unsoldered. So what I've got is I've got four 100 watt, four ohm, resistors which can be mounted to you know a heat sink. I've had these sitting around for you know, the last few months now and just never got around to doing anything. And as we can see each one of these has a flange mount style on them although it the measurements between the whole centers are imperial so it won't fit across the standard fin width which is in millimeters of like you know the heat sinks you can buy from JCAR etc. However it has prompted me to come up with an idea. I can use this heatsink. Now, it's roughly 250 millimeters long, I think it is, and the fins run horizontally, not vertically. So, as there's all these ribs here in the uh, face of the heatsink, these actually line up with the center of the fins. So, I can simply mount each of my resistors like that, maybe one like that and one like that across the heatsink. Then I would screw them down with some screws and uh, well I would put a wire between each of the endpoints on this side and each of the endpoints on this side and what that enables me to do is turn these resistors into an 8 ohm load and you connect your output of your amplifier here. Of course we've got to be very careful not to have the clip leads come into contact with the heatsink because it essentially just shorted out. So it's one thing to be mindful of when connecting it up uh, to an amplifier to make sure that nothing is shorting. These then two sets could be then connected in parallel with each other to make a 4 ohm 400 watt load. So you'd have your amplifier coming in here, a couple of jumper leads going over to this side to you know bridge the two together and then you would get you know 400 watts of capability. Or if I just wanted to test an amplifier that I know is less than 100 watts, I could just simply connect my clip leads across one of these resistors. Um, it becomes kind of versatile. And it's mounted to a heat sink so it should dissipate the heat nicely. And these uh, wire wound resistors should be up to the task. Now I've measured each one. They're around the 4 ohm mark. I'm not sure what the tolerance on these are, but um, yeah. I reckon it's about 5%. That's the project for today, is to make up a brand new dummy load so I can continue t testing amplifiers, because currently when I'm testing amplifiers I'm using these resistors um, on their own, uh, just sitting on the desk, and yeah, well, the dummy load that I blew up was sitting on the desk, got red hot, and because this is wood, it's treated pine, it started to smell like, uh, you know, a wood fire barbecue in here. Um, it actually got the wood of the desk pretty hot. So anyway, without any more further ado and talking about it, let's get to constructing it. This is how I'm going to mount it. I'm going to drill some holes, put some screws through, run a couple of wires, and that's it. So this one's going to be a pretty short video for you. So let's get started. Okay, the holes are drilled in the heatsink badly, and I'm going to use um, some 10 millimeter M3 screws and nuts when I find where the nuts are. Um, and I'm just going to mount the resistors directly to the heatsink. So, oh, there's the nuts. I found my nuts. These nuts. Right. Plenty of nuts. Uh, so, I get about uh, just simply mounting these resistors to the heatsink. So, what I might do is I might apply a little bit of heat sink transfer compound to these uh, before bolting it down. That might be a good idea. I think the easiest and less messier solution is to actually just smear it on the heat sink. Now I've actually decided to make it so that the 
uh, resistors mount with the end hanging off the edge of the heatsink rather than inset it. I think that'll work out a little bit more better. So at least it lessens the chance of shorting things. <laughs> Although it can still be possible, I suppose. All right, let me find my um, heatsink transfer compound. <laughs> Time to get messy. This is mostly water. I need a rag first. Need to try and get out as much of the water as possible. There we go. Don't really need a lot because it will spread out. I want to try and make it not so messy. Maybe just a tiny bit more. I think I need a new tube of this stuff. I do have one. Now this should work a lot better than the first original one did because, um, well, they're high power resistors. So it's got that going for it. I might as well use the rest of this tube up because there's not much left in it anyway. Didn't quite mean to do that, but that's all right. I can safely say, I think that tube is done. Well, there might be still a little bit more in there, I'll keep it anyway. Alright, just uh, clean that bit up, just so I'm not getting it all over my hands. And I'll, I'll clean off the surface of the heatsink when I'm finished. So I need to upend him. I'll just put this back on the rag so it's not putting heatsink transfer all over the desk. Right. So the 10 mil screws are just long enough because the fins are only uh, four to five millimeters uh, in depth in the inside edge. So get my screw ready, poke it through the hole, and I grab my resistor. And my nut. I'll try and get the thing started if I can. I think I've just got it started. I believe I've got the heatsink transfer compound in the wrong place, but that's perfectly okay. As I say, I can clean up around it when I'm finished. So, that hole. Okay, and then once uh, drop the nut. Once I've got these uh, these nuts started, I can then tighten them. I think that one's started now. Yes, it is. All right. So all I need to do now is just tighten it, and we're good to go. Right, and there we are there, all screwed together, upside down too. So I'll turn it the right way up. So there, that's sort of what I was going for, but it's a bit messy now. So I will need to actually clean it um, to get some of this heatsink transfer compound that's all over the place out of, you know, so it's clean. Didn't know where I was going with that. So let's give it a little bit of isopropyl alcohol or circuit board cleaner. It doesn't matter what you call the stuff, it's still the same stuff. Just to, um, you know, clean off the excess that's not really necessary. I mean, guaranteed, no matter how well I clean this, I'm going to get it all over my fingers anyway. So. Yeah, all right, I'll continue cleaning this up and come back. Okay, so that's pretty clean for the most part, but I will have to um, uh, 
wire it now, but what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to measure each of these resistors to make sure that they are 4 ohm, which they should be. Right, first resistor. <laughs> Coming up, 4.1. Next one. 4.2 Next one mm -hmm. 4.1 And fire lucky last 4.1 So they're roughly the same Within, you know, a certain margin of error Now I need to flip the soldering iron on And I need to find some wire to put some, uh, you know, link these two ends of these resistors together. And I might have the perfect wire for that. I've got this really thick mains wire. This is a blue wire, a neutral wire. Now, this should be rated at 10 amps easily. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually cut, well, that end off for a start. I'm gonna strip it right back. So it's all just bare wire and I'm gonna solder it without actually any insulation on it. Um, yeah, it, it, it doesn't really need the insulation. So stripping this may prove challenging though, at this length. I'll certainly try. A pair of wire strippers would probably be better here, but I don't have any decent ones. As long as it uh, breaches the insulation. All right. <sighs> yeah, it's coming. So that's what she said. Great. <sighs> I knew this wasn't going to be easy. Come on, you bitch. There we go. There we go. Oh, what an effort. Um, so, I'll just twist this back together so that it's uh, twisted up and not fraying. Looks like I've got all the strands too, so I didn't actually lose any. Um, you can buy this blue uh, 10 amp rated wire from Jaker. Right, so I've got one end there. So I just have to sort out the crap that's on the desk because it's over the top of the soldering iron core. Really? Alright. So I'm going to tin just the tip here just to stop it from coming back apart like so I can like so now that should pass just nicely through my holes like so and then I can solder this one Like so. I think I should really test whether or not the um, resistor bodies are actually isolated from the heatsink. Like, in other words, the resistor is not resistive to the heatsink. I'll do that once I've finished doing this. And then I just finish it up by tinning the rest of the wire. Like so. That should be able to handle quite a bit of current. And I just trim off my excess. And then I rinse and repeat for the other side.
Beautiful. All right, so there we go there. They're now physically joined. I'll just trim that little bit off. And now I will measure the resistance. Viva la resistance. Which absolutely made no sense. I've lost my leads. So now when I measure across these two points, it should be close to eight ohms. Well, that's the theory anyway. And coming up. Damn it. Eight, eight on the money. Nice. And the same on the other side. And survey says 8.18 ohm. Beautiful. So I will check that the resistor body is isolated from the heat sink. It appears to be. So yeah, I would have assumed they would be. I mean, there's no reason why they would be uh, coming into contact with the heat sink. That is, but the pins themselves are not. Yep, so that's all, all good. Everything is looking schmick. So pretty much that's basically all there is to this video. I don't have to actually test it at the moment because I can pretty much well assume and be confident that this is actually going to work and work properly and dissipate the heat into the heat sink. A lot better than my other one did. Um, so I do have a couple of more amplifiers coming up that I need to fault find and check. So it'll be pretty much that's when I'm going to be using this. So yeah, so that's how simple it is to build a powerful 8 ohm dummy load. And the other good thing about this is I can test both channels simultaneously on a stereo amplifier. So these resistors I bought off of eBay and I th think I paid $22 for all four because it was like, you know, buy four, you get it for a certain price each. So that makes them about $5.50 each, which is not very expensive. And you can actually probably buy these directly from China anyway for like two, three bucks. But there's just the wait time involved. So anyway, that's going to conclude this video. Uh, building a high power dummy load. I hope you enjoyed it, found it useful. If you did, please remember to go down below, rate, comment and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And this is the Astro 3 saying see ya, have a great day.